biggest thing I'm learning so far with flight school is that there's so many checklists and with like YouTube also, a lot of YouTube success does come down to a checklist. Did you do the market research on a good title and thumbnail? Script out a good video with a fresh mind. Come up with different content phrases to make your video interesting in different manners. For instance, vlog footage like this moment right here. When you put every element together, just like a good checklist when a pilot is going on a plane, they make sure everything is functional and operating well. That's when you get bangers. Like this video is going to be a banger. We're gonna introduce a maneuver called slow flight. Slow flight. A couple things to understand with this. So. Uh, lift. There's a line in the movie Rushmore that I absolutely adore. Bill Murray's character is returning to and giving a speech at the school he went to as a younger man, Rushmore. He says this, You guys have it real easy. I never had it like this when I grew up. But I send my kids here because the fact is, you go to one of the best schools in this country. Now for some of you, it doesn't matter. You were born rich and you're going to stay rich. But here's my advice to the rest of you. Take dead aim on the rich boys, get them in the crosshairs, and take them down. To understand this is to understand the concept of today's video, the great male filter. The great male filter is a concept I came across from Chris from the channel First Man. I'm actually a big, big fan of his and I have bought every one of his products, including his ebook, his Better Looking Man course, all of his supplements. I really support the guy. But really this idea of his, the great male filter, is just an extension of some of the same ideas mentioned in the slide edge, the compound effect, even atomic habits. And the overarching idea is this, time will make or break you. You might think that some of your tiny bad habits that you're allowing to seep in are not having an effect, you know, the occasional late night binge, but on a long enough time scale, any decision you're making right now will have dramatic results. And that's really what it's all about. The great male filter is the mechanism that reveals a man to himself. We all start out on the same level playing field, but as time goes by, some people start to separate themselves from the pack because of the decisions they make every day. In the early stages of life, men start out mostly the same, but time reveals a man to himself. So without further ado, here are the four principles that I came up with for today's video. A framework for standing out as time transpires. Principle number one, invest in that which increases your earning ability. Your most valued financial asset isn't actually your salary, your current salary, it's your earning ability, your ability to keep learning and earning and making yourself more valuable and making more money with time. Your capacity to make more money is more important than the money you're making right now. And it's very, very important if you want to stand out as time goes by to invest as aggressively as possible in your earning ability. Now, in my opinion, this sort of casts a shadow on a lot of traditional financial advice because traditional advice would say you should max out your 401k. This is something I did for the longest time on the recommendation of my dad. I would actually put 25% of my software engineer salary into my 401k. But since quitting my job, I've actually backed down on this contribution to my 401k quite a bit. And instead I invest in myself because traditional financial advice doesn't account for the scale of emerging technologies and like the internet, the medium by which we all sort of make money these days. The money you end up putting into your 401k becomes illiquid until you're 65. You can't do anything with it. Now it's going to keep increasing. There is going to be a compounding result from investing, but would it be the same amount as if you invested in yourself? I don't think so. My business coach is John Sanmez from the channel Bulldog Mindset. He's someone I invest in every month, ultimately to help increase my earning ability. I pay him $1,500 an hour once a month. To a lot of people, that would sound like an absolutely absurd rate. But the truth is, an hour long call with John and a few tweaks to my business strategy, they have increased my monthly salary by five to $10,000 a month. And it's only going to keep increasing. Like it's only gonna become more dramatic. And that's because a coach, they sort of meet you where you're at. So even though a lot of the advice John gave me is something I could have read in a book. Like he told me to take on more affiliate deals and less flat fee deals. He told me to start working on my own digital products a little more and a few other small tweaks like that to create like an ebook and a landing page. All this advice is stuff I could have looked up on my own, but the benefit of a coach is that they meet you eye to eye. They meet you where you're at. And then the advice is very tailored to your specific situation. And so you find all of these small details and kinks in your armor that you can sort of massage and work around and work through and ultimately make yourself so much more effective, so much faster. I believe so strongly in the power of coaching now 
that I've ultimately hired now eight coaches. This may seem excessive, but I can see in my own productivity output, just how fast I'm learning and like applying knowledge. I'm becoming a different person month over month. Like I'm changing more rapidly than ever. And it's because of all of this tailored specified knowledge. On another note, I recently did a Q and A over on Instagram, by the way, give me a follow on Instagram if you wanna keep up with my thoughts on cinematography, entrepreneurship, fitness. And on one of the Q and A's, some 16 year old guy who follows me reached out to me and he said he works a retail job and he wants advice on how he can become like a coder because I'd mentioned in one of my stories that coding was like the one thing that made me stop being broke. And I ultimately told him, even though this guy's just 16, I said, you know, if you're really serious about your growth and if you don't really need the money, I would say just quit your retail job because it's not really doing anything for your long-term earning ability. Effectively, you're just wasting time. Even if they're paying you 20 bucks an hour, you're wasting time if you don't need the money right now. Because if you put all that effort into going to Code Academy and going through one of their programs, spending three to four hours a day, just learning, whatever you learn is going to increase your earning ability much more dramatically than working the retail job. And I think this is especially important when you're young, because if you start to invest in your earning ability when you're young, by the time you get to my age, the results become very, very dramatic. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? It's identity theft. And there's a new victim every 14 seconds. For the first time in history, theft from cybercrime in the US exceeded that from home theft. It's happened to me. I definitely have had people reach out to me or try to steal my credit cards, my identity, sometimes posing as potential sponsorships. This is something that's very serious and worth watching out for. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers and sends alerts fast right to your phone and email. When it comes to fraud, every second matters. Connect your credit and bank accounts and get notified of any changes up to four times faster than Aura's competitors. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online, but keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And their antivirus software blocks malware and viruses before they infect your devices. In fact, I was shocked to find out that my personal information was found on the dark web three times on three different sites when I signed up for Aura. You can sign up for a free trial yourself on Aura and leave me a comment on how many times your personal information was found. It's quite scary and bewildering. Protect yourself from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if you or any of your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your 14 day free trial at Aura.com slash Captain Sinbad. Principle number two, invest in health and performance. The reason this is so worth investing in is because it dramatically adds the number of potent years to your life. What I mean by a potent year, like the things that you set out to do can actually happen. You can have intentions and goals, and then you can make changes in the world. You can be an effective man when you're potent. And I really don't know if life would be worth living for me if I didn't feel potent. I'd like, I'd have to be like in the retirement home and like making up enemies. Like I'd have to like look at Bob and be like, yo, Bob, I'm about to fuck you up in bingo tonight. Like I'd have to find a way to stay motivated because <laughs> being potent is like that tied to my happiness. But the great thing about focusing aggressively on health and performance is that it keeps your potent years running much, much longer. A really big inspiration to me in this direction is Tom Cruise. You know, say what you will about uh, some of his beliefs and lifelong practices. <laughs> I think he is an incredibly inspirational person. The man is just shy of 60 and he's only just beginning to show his age. Like he looks so great. And if you, any of you saw the latest Top Gun movie, you can really see this contrast where you look at him and then his contemporaries, like someone like Val Kilmer. Like Val Kilmer doesn't look anywhere near the same age as Tom. And of course you could say like, you know, Val Kilmer, he had some health problems. I think he had cancer actually. But the thing is like, Tom Cruise invests aggressively in his health and that superior investment does manifest just in the way he carries himself and how effective he is. Even compared to like some of his co-stars from the original Top Gun film, Kelly McGillis. Like now as they're both late 50s, early 60s, they look like different species. They look worlds apart. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but like as the years are going by, I'm starting to notice a decline in some of my peers who I was like jealous of, like as being athletes. A lot of the guys in high school who were like varsity level athletes, D1 athletes in college, I like am starting to rival them on that level of fitness, which I never thought would be possible. But it's just that since high school or college, 
they've slowed down, you know, the career got in the way, whatever might have gotten in the way, they started slowing down and I've been picking up the pace and I'm seeing myself becoming like far fitter than some of my contemporaries, which is crazy because I've only been going hard on fitness for like nine months with the running and the boxing and the weightlifting. It didn't take long for it to become like a truly impactful area of my life. And it really magnifies your potency so much that it's worth investing in. Like preventing the decline is very possible. You just have to work, you have to work extremely hard and be consistent and like really dial in your diet. You sort of have to live a boring personal life, but the reward that's there is that your creative life, your entrepreneurial life becomes that much more exciting. A micro point to add here is that it's also very rewarding to train for performance-based goals and not just aesthetics. Like I don't really train for aesthetics, even though I'm currently like the most aesthetic I've ever been. I really like training for performance and that's just because it makes you a multi-faceted athlete and it gets you excited to like wake up the following morning. Up until recently, I was training to hit a sub six minute mile. I've been doing sprint work and a lot of running, long distance running for building up an aerobic base. And I finally got that sub six minute mile. And now I'm transitioning over. My most important goal right now in terms of fitness is to hit a three plate squat. Just the setting of these goals, even if they're arbitrary, they have such dramatic effects. Like now that I'm going for a major squat strength increase, I'm like making new friends at the gym because I need a spotter on each side of the squat rack so that I don't tumble down so that I can have the courage to hit depth. I'm just like meeting more people and then I'm like starting to use accessory machines that I wouldn't otherwise like the hack squat machine. Like setting performance based goals and then adjusting your behavior to like accommodate them like will just have an impact on your personality. And more than that, it'll just make you excited to train and to get up the next day. It'll just bleed over into everything. Hopefully I'll get this squat PR within the next 30 days, after which I'm really excited to be training for my first marathon and to attempt a sub four hour marathon. Basically what I'm saying with this micro point is that it's not all about aesthetics. And in fact, giving yourself fitness goals all throughout your life will give you a major spring in your step. Principle number three, invest in skill acquisition. One of the most useful phrases in terms of my career that I ever came across was from this cartoonist, Scott Adams. He had written this book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. And one of the most like best lines in that whole book is every skill you acquire doubles your odds of success. Now he didn't say anything about the proficiency of those skills. You don't have to be like exceptional at every skill you learn, but just getting good at skills will raise your market value. Merely being good at more than one skill will start to have a dramatic effect on your market value. The way he writes this in the book, he says, good plus good is greater than excellent, which is to say being good at two skills overall is a bigger net positive than being excellent at one. And here's a great example that he points out. In California, having one common occupational skill plus being fluent in Spanish, will put you at the head of the line for many types of jobs. You will start to be the front of the pack just because you have that skill that the job requires and you also know Spanish. Now, if on top of that, you were a good public speaker and you actually knew your way around a PowerPoint presentation, suddenly you go from being at the front of the list for getting that job to now being considered like running the organization just because public speaking and managing and compounding those three skills starts to really, really mean something. Obviously some skills or more valuable than others. But if you think of each skill in terms of doubling your chances of success, it will start to steer your actions in the right direction. You effectively hack your brain to become more proactive in the pursuit of success. And then the final principle here is this, avoid investments of time or money that get in the way of earning ability, health, and skill acquisition. Basically, the final principle is don't do anything to fuck these things up. Chris from First Man has actually really, really hammered this point home. He says one thing people often do that like really damages their journey on the great male filter and like arriving at the age of 30 or 35 in a good position is having kids too soon. Now, nothing wrong with having kids from like an emotional connection standpoint. Kids are wonderful. I love kids. But the thing is, if you have a child and let's say that increases your monthly expense by $1,200 a month, well, the kid is not increasing your earning ability. In fact, he or she is taking away from it. You're like investing time into a child instead of working on your goals, working on your business. 
And then whatever that thousand or twelve hundred dollars a month that you're spending on this kid on whatever food and diapers and stuff, that's money that you are not putting into some course that could be making you better, some online skill, some class, some training program, whatever it might be, some hire in your company to make your company more effective. And essentially you're not investing in things that increase your earning ability. You're not investing in things that increase your health and performance and your skill acquisition. You're investing in something that essentially is a suck away from these things that you should be doing to stand out, to get better. Does this mean we should never have kids or marry someone? No, I think getting married and having kids is like one of the great milestones of life and one of maybe life's great joys. But I personally would not want to have children or get married to someone if they don't absolutely support my progress. And if it isn't on a timeline where I've already had such abundance built up in my life that I can take on basically that additional responsibility. Another point here is don't take on dumb investments. What's a dumb investment? Going to college without any directed purpose. Going to grad school without any directed purpose. In fact, so many people in my friend group who they like are quitting their job. They know they don't want to be at their job. And they're like, oh, what should I do? I guess I'll just go to grad school. Just because it gives you this impression of like doing something with your life. But I've had friends tell me this like at parties later on. They're like, oh yeah, I don't know why I went to that. Like I didn't see the purpose of that. It's essentially money that you've just thrown away, that you've made illiquid. If it isn't directed, if you can't specifically write me like a paragraph, a five paragraph essay on why going to grad school is going to increase your earning ability and get you closer to your goals, you should not be going. You should not be doing that thing. This also goes for like investments that make your money illiquid, but might not be ultimately helpful. This could be like buying a house. Now, to be fair, I own a house, but I also bought a house that I knew would like go up in market value and Indeed, this place in the two years since I bought it has increased in value by like $50,000. But a lot of people buy houses and cars just to keep up with the times, keep up with the Joneses, and that effectively damages their long-term earning ability. Depending on the stage of life you're in, even things like dating or eating out could be a colossal waste of time. Now you could say to me, dude, like life isn't just all about increasing your earning ability. You also have to live and enjoy. And yes, I'll agree with you there. But the thing is, the decisions we make when we're young have the most amount of horsepower. This is something that MJ DeMarco said in his book, The Millionaire Fastlane. The younger you are, the more like powerful the decision you make is. Now you can still pivot and adjust and course correct. And I've had to like course correct my career like eight or nine times. So there's nothing wrong with that, but you should very carefully consider where you are investing time and money as a young guy, because the decisions we make compound over time and they create dramatically different results. And the thing is, things like eating out and dating and going to concerts or whatever people do to have fun, that's always gonna be there for you if you choose to invest in getting your money up and getting your fitness on point. Because if you have the money, you can always do the thing, but you can't ever get that time back. And with these principles in effect, acted upon day in and day out, you'll probably start noticing that you're going to start pulling away from the pack. I don't even consider myself that impressive of a person, but I feel like, like even from well a financial and fitness perspective, I'm like starting to pull away from the pack. I feel kind of embarrassed about it. It's only been nine months of being a serious lifter, boxer, runner, but I'm starting to be as fit or fitter than the guys from high school, like the athletes. I guess it's just that since high school, they've been slowing down and I've been picking up the pace. For me, it does come back to the quote that I said at the start of this video, that Bill Murray quote, take dead aim at the rich kids. In this context, the rich kid is basically anyone who started out with an unfair advantage. But the thing is, they started to take their positioning for granted. And while they've been slacking, we have been gaining momentum. We've been getting stronger. We've been making the climb. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nikhil. This channel is a combination of comedy sketches, lifestyle challenges, and personal development videos for creatives. If that's something that appeals to you, then consider subscribing. If you want to connect with me further, you can follow me on Instagram. I actually do check my DMs try to respond to people with interesting questions. I do monthly Q and A's. I try to keep up with reels, posts, and stories related to fitness and productivity to try to give some value back to the viewer. So you can find me on Instagram at nrajapande. And lastly, if you like my videos and you sort of have been dabbling with the idea of being a YouTuber yourself, wanting to grow an online business that could be like multiple five figures or even a six figure per month business, I would love to work with you. I am taking on 10 new coaching clients for July and the slots are starting to fill up. I'm capping it at 10 so that I can really give a lot of attention to each person. So if that's something that you're curious about, you can fill out an application form that's also in the description box. But with that being said, for those of us who do the things that start to separate us from the pack, to us I say, greatness is coming. Cheers.